So earlier this week, we've heard Tesla mention that its Model 3s and Model Y's tax credits are likely to be reduced by 2024. Now, Tesla never explained the reason why, and many are kind of seeing this as just a stirrup of demand from Tesla, kind of just incentivizing people to buy a new Model 3 before the end of the year. However, one of the reasons why Tesla most likely mentioned this is because the Inflation Act, right, which Tesla benefited the most from, had a moving target for mine batteries each year moving upwards for making sure that the battery batteries are mostly mined in North America. Now, most of Tesla's batteries are produced in China. However, earlier this year, Tesla mentioned plans on looking to build a new battery plant in the US to make lithium iron phosphate batteries using the Chinese company technology and adopting kind of what Ford mentioned earlier this year as well. Now, recently, Tesla beat on its delivery numbers quarter over quarter, and this was most likely due to the fact of one being able to price their cars lower starting a pricing war in the EV space, but along with the fact that Tesla was able to benefit from the tax credits. Now we know that Tesla is going to be announcing its earnings on July 19th for Wednesday after the close of the bell. And one of the main concerns is gross profit margins. Now Tesla has been able to flex its muscles on pricing power because Tesla had one of the best gross margins in the auto industry. However, because Tesla has been able to lower their prices to be much more competitive in the EV space, we've been seeing this massive decline on gross profit margins, and it's most likely that we're going to be seeing this decline go even further down to possibly 15% on the next earnings report. However, although we've been seeing these price cuts, we've been also seeing the underlying costs reduce for Tesla, especially after the ramp up of Giga Berlin and Giga Austin. Now, though we may be seeing gross profit margins declining, this may actually just be the bottom of it. Now, I also wanna cover a few other things when it comes to Tesla and really just take a look at Tesla from a technical perspective as well as we head into the earnings. So with that said, let's go ahead and hop into my laptop. Alrighty, so we're officially in my laptop and we're taking a look at Tesla stock. Now I wanna go ahead and talk about Tesla stock both from a technical approach, right? Looking at just the charts, but I also wanna highlight some things from a macroeconomic perspective. So in a recent video, I mentioned how headline inflation has decreased to 3%, right? Now this is obviously good news because the closer that we are to the 2% target which is the Federal Reserve's target for inflation, well, the sooner that we get to the Federal Reserve cutting, right, or, you know, slashing down interest rates, and which is going to be very bullish for the overall market. However, I do want to express some concerns, and I shared this with the Push and Profit private group recently, but I wanted to now share this publicly on YouTube, right? So, one of the concerns I have is just how the monetary policies actually interact with, you know, the overall economy. So right here, I have a list of all the rate hikes that have happened since, uh, you know, 2022. Now, these rate hikes, you know, the economy doesn't feel these until typically a year later, right? And so with that said, you know, we've really only felt 30% of the rate hikes so far. We felt the 25 basis points, the 50 basis points, and the 75 basis points. Yet, we're already seeing headline inflation already at 3%. So we're close to the 2% target, yet we still have a multitude of other rate hikes that the economy still hasn't felt, right? So this is why my overarching view on the overall market is a little bit more bearish and I'm a little bit more hyper selective on a few industries, right? And so this is why, you know, when it comes to like looking at individual stocks, it's we're going to have to be a little bit more selective because we're going to see more, you know, companies getting crushed and other companies succeeding, right? Because obviously we are already seeing the calamity in, in the banking uh, sector where we saw a lot of regional banks already collapse simply because of the interest rates already being so high. And so with the amount that we still have to feel, well, this is going to be a little bit challenging for the overall market, right? Especially because one of the concerns for Tesla in particular is that, you know, interest rates for new car loans are fairly high, right? It's, you know, almost unaffordable to get into a new car. And that's, you know, a major concern for Tesla because obviously we want it to be easy for, you know, consumers to pick up a new Tesla. We don't want interest rates to be too high. So I do expect that the Federal Reserve is going to possibly hike an additional 25 basis points, although I don't 
don't think they should, but it's you know very likely that they're going to do an additional 25 basis points and then have to cut. And that's bullish, but really only bullish in the short term because the long term is going to be very challenging to have this quote unquote soft landing, right? Now, one of the things I've also highlighted in a previous video here on my channel is the recent bank earnings that we had on July 14th. We heard from JP Morgan and Wells Fargo and we saw that they beat their earnings, which is good, right? But one of the things I mentioned in particularly that we wanted to pay attention to was one, their forward guidance, but also just here on you know uh, charge off accounts and also loan defaults. And so we heard from both Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan that you know they're having a, an increased amount of loan defaults, meaning individuals who are not able to pay off their loans and, and having the default, and also charge off on accounts where you know we're just having accounts closed because of being negative, etc. Right. So this is obviously not good right so that's another concern yeah you know we're seeing earnings getting beat but moving into the you know future things are going to be a lot challenging and so this is something that we absolutely want to keep our eye on now of course going into next week the most notable uh, earnings are going to be as I mentioned uh, obviously Tesla. Of course, we're also going to have uh, Netflix, I believe, is also announcing earnings on the same day. So we're going to want to pay attention to that as well as, you know, parsing through the earnings data kind of gives us an indication of where the consumer actually is. Because, you know, obviously seeing the earnings for companies, we can see are consumers spending less, right? It's kind of just like another indicator, right? So looking into Tesla, right? It's very likely that Tesla is going to beat its earnings. Uh, we have a lot of analysts on Wall Street that also believe that as well, which is also uh, pretty unusual considering the fact that you know everyone agrees that profit margins or gross profit margins are going to decrease, right? So we're going to want to pay attention to other things such as uh, free cash flow and revenue, etc. But the general consensus is that Tesla is going to beat its earnings despite profit margins going down. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned this may just be the bottom of profit margins decline because we're seeing costs uh, decrease for Tesla. So that's obviously good. Now, what can we see if Tesla has a good earnings? Well, first off, I want to show you guys something over here, right? So when we kind of just, uh, you know, zoom in over here on the chart, we see that we saw this major gap over here when Tesla reported its positive delivery numbers, right? Um, then we saw the gap kind of get filled around over here, but we saw Tesla start bouncing upwards. Now, a video from almost two weeks ago, I mentioned that it was likely that Tesla was going to fill this gap and come down. And I mentioned the reasons uh, why I believe that. I'm not going to go ahead and repeat that in this video because I don't want to, you know, be like a broken record. But one of the things I've highlighted is that we're most likely going to bounce up from here simply because there's a lot of volume by price. And this is going to kind of uh, establish itself as a support, right? One of the things I often highlight on the channel is that we want to pay attention to the volume profile and look at volume by price. Because because when there's a lot of volume by price, well, that's typically where we see supports and resistances established, we see consolidation, but when there's little volume by price, well, if there's a lot of buying pressure, it pushes up the order book. And that's why we see, you know, stocks, you know, move up fast when there's little volume by price and vice versa. When there's uh, no or, you know, little volume by price, but there's selling pressure, we see, you know, uh, stocks fall down pretty heavily, right? So one of the things I've highlighted is that, you know, looking at Tesla from a technical uh, approach, if we do beat earnings, well, that could push us an additional 6% up and that could push us right around over here where there's this sweet spot where there's very little volume relative to price. And if we still have buying pressure around over here, well, we could see Tesla still come up. And that's why I recently said that it's most likely that we could go into the uh, mid uh, 300 price levels and then closer to the end of the year where Tesla typically has its uh, most deliveries, we could see Tesla go up to the $400 level. Now, you know, in the short term, I'm bullish on Tesla. And also in the long term, I'm bullish on Tesla as well going into 2030. However, in the medium term, right, looking at the first quarter, probably the second quarter of 2025, for, well, that's where I have a little bit of concerns uh, or a little bit of a concern because that's where we're going to actually see uh, a little bit of a difficult challenge with the overall economy. And this is why, you know, you don't want to just look at the charts. You don't want to just look at, you know, the earnings for a company and the fundamentals. You want to look at everything. You want to have a holistic approach. And this is why, you know, I often emphasize paying attention to what's happening in the overall economy as well, paying attention to monetary policy and fiscal policy because everything plays a role in the financial markets, right? 
So, you know, what am I doing? Well, obviously, I do want to emphasize that regardless of what I'm doing, you guys should only trade and invest in whatever you guys see value in. And you should never just copy what anyone else says, especially even me, right? Because even though I've been right for Tesla for the last few months, there's a chance that I could be wrong in the future. In fact, there's a big chance that I could be completely wrong. So you should only trade and invest in whatever you see value. With that said, you know, for my long-term portfolio on Tesla, I expect that, you know, in the bull case, Tesla is going to move upwards, right? However, if we have a bear case where Tesla does uh, do bad on earnings, well, you know, and, and we do get rejected, well, we also have to, you know, factor that in. And so for my long term portfolio, one of the things I'm looking at is, hey, if Tesla uh, is unable to beat earnings, we could possibly fall back down to this two hundred and fifty nine dollar area. And that's an area where I have a lot of interest in because I want to see if Tesla does not beat earnings and it does fall to this level. Are we going to hold up? Or are we going to break below? See, if Tesla touches this area because of a bad earnings and it holds up and starts bouncing up and showing confirmation of an uptrend again, well, that's, you know, just a signal for me to add more into my long term portfolio. Right. Again, you know, this is not me telling you guys when you should add into your long term portfolio. You guys could do whatever you want and obviously do your due diligence. You know, I know some individuals prefer a dollar cost averaging an equal amount. And I definitely do that with my index funds. But when it comes to, you know, you know, in particular, or specific stocks like Tesla, I don't just average in equally every month. I like to just wait for a dip and then buy once there's confirmation of an uptrend. And so that's going to be my approach for Tesla in the long term, right? For my long term portfolio. But in the short term, I also have a separate trading account where I trade Tesla in the short term and I try to profit off the fluctuations in price, right? And I know this throws a lot of people off because, you know, I see it in the comment sections. People often ask, how can you trade a Tesla but also invest in Tesla? Listen, trading and investing are two separate vehicles, right? And so I like to approach them completely differently and separate them with different accounts. So my long-term account, that's in a separate brokerage account. And my trading account, right? where I use Webull, by the way, you guys could check out the links in the description below and get some free stocks if you sign up using my code for Webull. You know, my Webull trading account, you know, if Tesla falls down, I'm, I'm probably not going to be shorting it simply just because I believe that it, Tesla is going to end strongly for the end of 2023. And I'd rather not short Tesla being that Tesla is one of those companies where, you know, Elon Musk has done a great job at, you know, using catalyst events and having a big exposure to social media to really pop up Tesla stock. Right. And so that's one of the reasons I don't like shorting Tesla stock, along with the fact that Tesla, um, is one of the most shorted mega caps out there, right? Not saying that a, a short squeeze is going to happen because typically we want to see 10%. And right now Tesla's at uh, 3% for a short uh, interest or um, short flow interest. Uh, I, I can't even think of the word right now. Um, but regardless of what I'm saying, we're not close to a short squeeze, right? What I'm trying to say is that I personally don't like shorting Tesla. I know when I called out Tesla coming down for these days over here, some individuals could have shorted Tesla. I personally did not. Um, simply because Tesla is one of those stocks where it could just rubber band up uh, immediately, right? So in my short-term trading account, even if Tesla doesn't beat earnings, I don't plan on shorting it. But if it does beat earnings, well, I do plan on going long, adding you know some more shares for either a swing trade or a day trade, or got you know purchasing some calls uh, after the earnings, right? You know, going long, of course. I don't like trading uh, and holding options before the night of earnings because, of course, of IV uh, crush and etc. Um, and theta. I don't want to get too technical in the option space with that. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, even if Tesla falls down in my short-term trading account, I'm not looking to short. And in my short-term trading account, I'm actually still looking at Tesla uh, going long. But with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to watch this next video right over here. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Take care, guys.